Hi guys, Steve Good here with the Scroll Saw Workshop. I want to spend a few minutes tonight talking about a problem that uh, some of the uh, members of my blog are having uh, that own a Mac. Uh, they go to my blog and they see these programs down close to the bottom of the blog. And what these programs are, uh, are they allow you to create scroll saw patterns uh, for things like keychains or key fobs and uh, desk name plates and some other things. And uh, they wonder as a Mac user if they can use these programs. And the answer to that is no, these are all PC only and I've never had a chance to try to get them ported over to a Mac. Uh, so a while back, uh, because of this, uh, with the help of another programmer, uh, we designed an online version of these programs. It's not quite as full featured, uh, but it will still allow you to get some things done. And uh, I wanted to spend just a few minutes tonight talking about this again uh, because it's been a long time and I've really never promoted it on the blog because we never got it completely flushed out exactly the way I wanted it. And I uh, probably will do some more work on this soon uh, to mostly give you some more instructions on how to use it. But I thought tonight I'd do this video just to quickly show you because I've had uh, this email several times just in the last week from Mac users. Uh, when you go to the URL, it's www.stevedgood.com slash stencil. It'll take you to this page uh, that has some uh, control panel over here on the left and over on the right this is a sheet of paper and this is just a rule at the top of the page to uh, give you an indication of how large the pattern is going to be. Over here in the control panel, you basically have two selections. You can select my keychain, which will let you design a key fob similar to what you're seeing here on the screen, or you can uh, select the scroll saw, which will let you do a nameplate. So the first selector up here is just the type of pattern. The second box down here is where you type the name that you want on that pattern. So in this case, if I type my name in there, you can see I have a uh, desk nameplate. Now, if I want to move this around or change the size of it, that's what these sliders are for. So in this case, I'll move it over close to the left. Uh, I'll move it down just a little bit, and I'm going to resize it to take up mostly the whole page because you generally want these to be fairly large. Uh, so at that point, I can come down here to my save download, and when I click that, it'll open up. Let me shrink this down where you can see it it'll open up a PDF file uh, that will have the nameplate on it. And you can see in this case, I got it just a little bit too long and it didn't quite fit on the PDF page. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm just gonna slightly shrink it back down just a little bit and we'll do that again. And now you can see we have the full name one there. Now, of course, you could take this sheet of paper after you print it out and uh, you know take it to your copier and enlarge it a little bit if you wanted it even bigger. Okay, so that's the first step. That's how to create the uh, desk nameplate. And again, you can move this around on the page. Uh, like say, if you wanted to create you know, several of them, you could move this down. Go down here to add new item. And now the Steve Goodwin's up here, and this is the new one. So in this case, we're gonna create another nameplate with a different name. Whoops. And you can see one thing happens here, the lowercase letters uh, can't use extenders on these nameplates. So a lot of times, rather than seeing that uh, lowercase extended up like this, you might wanna just do all uppercase, which is fine on, on these nameplates also. Then, you know, I'll make it, try to make it about the same size as the other one. Again, we could move it down. And now when we go to print these out, we'll have both of these on the same page and obviously we could do even another one up here with no problem. Uh, so let's go back to add a new one and this time we'll go ahead and do a keychain while we're in here. So this is item three. So up here you can see now we have Steve Good, that's item one. Then we have Patty Good, that's item two. And now item three is going to be the key fob we want to create. And we can type our name there on the keychain or the key fob, move it over so we have it off the edge of the paper move it down. In this case, we'll make it, uh, let's see, let's move it back over so we can get the right size. So that would be one, two, three, almost four inches long for that keychain. Uh, so that'd be about the right size. Then, then we could put that over on our paper. Again, we could go to our print command, which I now have off the screen a little bit. 
and it'll open up our PDF and then we can print that out and uh, have our key fob and our two nameplates. So that's how the online version of the uh, scroll saw pattern generator works. And again, I'll try to work on this a little bit more to add some instructions to it. Maybe I'll have an instruction video link down here or something like that. Uh, but I think you can see it's fairly easy to use. Just every time you hit add new, it's gonna create a new box over here in the control panel to allow you to select. And like say, if I go back to this patty good and I wanted to change the size of it, uh, I could go down here and you know, make it smaller or bigger or whatever I wanted to do. So I can continue to change the features on it just by selecting the different tab. So I think uh, for you Mac users out there that don't have the other programs I have available to you, uh, at least this gives you a chance to, uh, you know, play with creating some of your own scroll saw patterns. So I hope this was helpful and uh, give it a try and we'll see you next time here at the Scroll Saw Workshop.